Welcome back, everybody, to a brand new feature match. Yes, we are back with the good old feature matches. Um, this is round one of a mega tournament that we had. Higher prize pool, higher entry fee, about $20 uh, that we had. Um, a much more sort of competitive feel as opposed to a regular locals. It's just four rounds of Swiss. This is four rounds of Swiss, but a cut to top eight. Um, and we have Paleo Frogs here, round one versus Magical Muskets. So... A pretty uh, interesting matchup, of course, Wiz piloting uh, Paleo on the left. My friend John piloting the Magical Musket deck on the right. You guys have seen him in a profile, uh, I think, before. And you guys will see him in an upcoming video as well. Uh, the returning of the series called The Lab. I'm going to be hyping that up because I'm super excited to bring that back. And uh, I hope you guys... I think you guys will really, really enjoy it uh, 100%. So you guys have that to look forward to. Um, keep... Follow me on social medias and discords to get notified about when that video will be going out. It's going to take a while to edit, uh, and I want to take my time with it so everything is right. A um, little room for improvement after the first recording session of it, but, uh, you know, things will get better as time goes on. So, Paleo going first, setting four and one monster. Uh, could be a dupe, could be a Ronin, who knows. Um, but uh, normaling the cast bar here after resolving a pot of desires... And that normal summon will be met with Canadia because that's a pretty good start. You don't want him going right into max with four set back row. That'll get him four monsters on the field or a search of one because he does have one monster on his field. And uh, as he decides what to do next here, I'm going to quickly mention if you guys are picking up anything on TCG Player, don't forget to use my affiliate link to them down in the description below. Anytime you guys use that link, I receive a small portion of the revenue from your purchase. Uh, it doesn't provide a discount, unfortunately, but this requires nothing else of you other than just using that link while you shop and shopping and checking out like normal, and it helps support me in the process. So feel free to check that out. But now we're going to see an instant fusion. And uh, a thousand eyes restrict here. We're trying to see uh, that removal of that set card in any other way v except battle. Um, because uh, if it's a dupe frog, you want to sort of get rid of it in a certain way if possible, like spitting it back. Um, you know, that's probably one of the best ways to deal with it. But we'll see a compulse bouncing back to thousand eyes restrict and an olenoids hitting a set cosmic cyclone. And then, of course, a paleo being chained. Um, bring back that Canadia getting some more advantage here and we'll see what that set card is perhaps here during this paleo players turn now could flip it up go right into a totally awesome we know he has a set cast bar and we'll pretty much turn off all any uh, all of any magical musket spells or traps that he has in his hand at the moment since I believe you do need to control a face-up magical musket be able to use them from the hand use things like the uh, last stand you know your counter traps from hand because that's the thing you can do so he'll flip up that dupe frog and follow it up with a activation of Morella and then of course chaining that paleo in graveyard Olenoids will summon itself out the uh, one thing about paleo that's so frustrating is yes you can try to bait out a lot of the traps um, but a well-built paleo deck will have a lot of readily available and you know mostly uh, if not all chainable traps that are able to be activated um, in any given situation um, and the nice thing about the paleo is that sort of breaks the, the, in quotes the rules of a beatdown deck such as it um, is a lot of times when you're using those trap cards, it's most of the time a one-for-one -one trade off But the paleos can recur themselves so easily with the activation of other trap cards um, If of course there is nothing to be chained in response um, Because that's how you can make them miss timing um, But uh, in most cases they will go through and allow for free things like totally awesome um, So totally awesome will get summoned. Uh, I don't think he ended up attacking with the dupe frog um, I went back. I'll have to go back and check the actual footage with audio to make sure if he attacked the Dupe Frog, but they didn't take life points for that, so I'm assuming he didn't attack with it. Um, unless he has zero attack, but I think he has 100 attack. But regardless, uh, Caspar is going to get run over by the Toad, and then standby phase. We'll see, of course, that infamous other Dupe Frog now actually joining the other Dupe Frog, so I don't think he can attack, period, uh, with double Dupe Frog on the board. Um, but we'll see a copy of Cross Domination which is going to attempt to negate uh, a monster's effect. It is a quick play, I believe, negate and also uh, drop the attack and defense um, either to zero or it's just a quick play negate, though, which is really, really strong. And that's going to force the Totally Awesome regardless. 
Um, and then he'll link off now into a copy of that max. He can either add two Magical Musket Spell and Traps or Magical Musket Cards. I'm not sure what the stipulation is. Um, or he can special summon uh, muskets from his deck up to the number of spells and traps his opponent controls. Now, in this particular matchup, that summon effect is probably going to be more prevalent uh, than the add effect because Palio, in any given situation, at least on your turn, um, if they're not trying to make a big push, if you can't, you know, link summon on your opponent's turn, which you oftentimes can, um, and you guys will see that later on, but, you know, uh, you know, Palio set four, set five, you know, summon five monsters, which just sounds ridiculous, but if you can end phase make that happen, or if you can just sort of force, uh, you know, an interruption, because if they let it go through, you're just going to gain a, a, a dumb, a dumb amount of resources. I mean, even here, just adding to the uh, Crooked Crown and the uh, Desperado, I believe, uh, from his deck to his hand. Both very, very solid cards here. going to start by playing the Crooked Crown, the Continuous Trap. Just activating it from hand, you know, as you do trap cards, right? Uh, but in response, of course, we'll see the activation of Olenoides in the graveyard to summon itself out in response to the activation of another trap card. So long as that chain uh, doesn't get interrupted. So long as it can be the next thing in the chain. And uh, Max, unfortunately, is a small monster at 1,000 attack. And uh, won't be able to do anything to that totally awesome. Of course, with Dupe Frog on the field, he won't have to can't do anything period really in the battle phase summoning dock which i believe if a spell or trap is activated on your side of the field he can add back something from grave um but he'll use the desperado which i believe will destroy a card on the field and uh, of course chaining the morella and removing the totally awesome from the field adding back a dupe from grave as a recycling option and then dock going to add back one from grave as well and uh, from here, I, it, it's not like I see much that you can do over the course of this turn as he's been trying to remove cards. The Palio player has been getting advantage, uh, you know, summoning two Palios in the process. Um, there is a Magical Musket Trap that is like a triple call by the Grave. That could have been pretty helpful here, but um, at the end of the day, it's just not enough. Um, probably not the best opening either. Um, and he's just going to decide to scoop there and save time and head into game two. And as we do that, of course, a quick shout out to our sponsor at Imperium Duelist. Check out their website down in the description below and use that discount code at checkout, WinterKills10 off, to save 10% off your entire order on some amazing playmats, sleeves, dice, and more. And end phase, we'll see. Yes, this is the spice. And you guys will see more in depth about this in the the video, uh, the new video of the lab going up later in the week probably. Um, but Enfei is going to use World Legacy Awakens to allow him to link summon immediately after it resolves, using monsters you control. So that allows you to go into max during your opponent's turn, which is going to allow him to summon four monsters here, completely uninterrupted because he had just set all of those cards, so he won't be able to use any of them. And unless he has an Ash, which I don't think he does, because if he did, I would have thrown that card down so fast. So he's going to get to summon four monsters here. It's going to be Kid Brave, Caspar, I believe Starfire, and a copy of Doc. So just summoning four monsters here for free is pretty insane, if you ask me. Max doing its job here well, putting on a lot of pressure. And most importantly, during his opponent's turn. Uh, to say the least. So from here, you have to go about navigating this board correctly. Uh, a lot of chainable traps, so you're probably not going to get too much value out of removing anything. If you do, it's probably going to result in it being chained. Unless if you get lucky and you hit something like an Olenoids, which cannot be chained in this situation where there's no back row he'd really want to destroy on his opponent's side of the field. Um, or in some situations where perhaps... You might have a Link Monster on field, and there's a Canadia that you hit um, with maybe like a Phoenix, and you hit a Canadia, and they can't book the Phoenix. Those are some situations where you can get rid of cards where they cannot chain them because they simply cannot be activated um, be due to like not having good targets. So he'll go into another max here, and then be able to search one. And that was that copy of Last Stand, which is a counter trap. Uh, so that'll prove to be very helpful here. And I'm going to activate a copy of, uh, I believe, Steady Hands. Uh, I think that is Steady Hands. 
which will double the attack and defense of a monster that he controls. And I believe targeting um, either the Kid Brave or a copy of Max, but uh, go ahead and activate one of his muskets here to be able to summon one from Dak. He's going to summon another copy of Caspar. And then he's going to link off a of Max and the Kid Brave into a copy of Phoenix. Of course, is co-linked here. Going to discard another uh, card here, which I think might have been another copy of Steady Hands. And there's that old noise. So this is a perfect example that I bring up um, where he hit the right card, essentially, and he cannot chain it um, because there is no targets that he'd want to hit uh, or even can it because I don't know if old noise specifically states uh, opponent spell and trap. So he's going to activate Desires here. And then Caspar will activate in response to be able to search a copy of Desperado. Now, one thing to keep in mind, though, he did hit the Paleo. He couldn't chain it and couldn't get value out of it. But that doesn't mean you can't get value out of it later when another trap card is activated to be able to spring itself onto the field, as all the Paleozoics do. Um, and forgive me if I don't know all of the Magical Musket cards' effects uh, word for word. Um... But I, I kind of have a basic understanding of what they do. But either way, linking off that Phoenix and that Max into a copy of that Unicorn. Um, and attempting now to get rid of that set monster. He knows for a fact it's got to be Dupe Frog. And if he destroys it by battle, he's only going to give him Swap Frog, which he does not want to do. You do not want to do that. Oftentimes you don't really have a choice, but um, if he can help it here, he's going to try to do so. So discarding Skullmeister, interestingly enough, off of the Unicorn, he's going to activate Morella in response. Video getting a bit brighter here because I adjusted the ISO on the uh, camera because I felt it was a bit dark after I finished my first round match. Because um, I actually get to play and film locals at the same time now thanks to this new camera. Um, but using Morella to dump that copy of Spiritual Swords to the graveyard, which will protect him in the battle phase if he would to uh, use that. His opponent basically cannot declare a direct attack, um, which will, of course, save him, buy him another turn, which often case uh, is something that you need. It's just essentially one more turn. So, the Unicorn, uh, I believe, was not trying to spin uh, the set monster uh, because I, I, I believe he might have been trying to hit a set back row. Not the monster here, because nothing has been spun back to the deck uh, at this point. But instead, opting to just go into battle phase, I suppose, here, and clear it this way. Because the Unicorn, as it stands, with its stats at 2200, can clear two cards. Um, and he's going to try to compulse it, because he doesn't want him running it over, I guess. Trying to protect this monster as much as he can. But Last Stand will negate... He's going to be able to add back here off of the resolution, after the resolution, off of Doc to add back, I believe, either the uh, Cross Dominator or a copy of the Steady Hands. Can't tell which one it is. Um, but then another Compulse here is going to essentially put back that Nightmare Unicorn back into his deck to use later. And our Paleo player has exhausted all of his traps at this point. And hasn't been able to, hasn't chained any Paleos out of the graveyard. Um, so he's going to set one. Having one other card in his hand, he's not willing to set or put on the board at this point. But thinking end phase here, if there's anything he wants to do before he's able to actually use that set card that he's put on the field, because he has just set it, of course. And his graveyard, the Paleo player's graveyard, looking pretty good as of right now, but Dancing Needle going to say otherwise... Uh, going to banish both the Olenoides, the Morella, and that copy of Spiritual Swords, which is going to hurt a lot, because those are some really good graveyard resources that, as a Paleo player, you definitely would like to keep in your graveyard. And then Caspar, or not Caspar, but uh, Starfire activating, of course, on the resolution to summon a level 4 or lower, I believe, Magical Musket Monster from the deck. And I'll go for that Kid Brave. Um, so yeah, Doc will add one back. Uh, when a Spell or Trap is activated, I believe. Um, and the Starfire will summon one. The Caspar will add a Spell or Trap, a Magical Musket Spell or Trap. And the Kid Brave will let you discard, I believe, a Magical Musket card to draw two. Um, so they all have very good effects all around 
Uh, so simply playing cards like Upstart, Goblin, and Desires. Uh, Desires will just let you plus, essentially, off of any of these given guys. Uh, especially off the Caspar. Upstart and Caspar is essentially like an engage, if you think about it. Uh, you know, add a card and draw. Very nice. So, during his standby phase, he's going to opt to use World Legacy Awakens here uh, to go into a copy of the, uh, the Max. And since here, since he opted to use the World Legacy Awakens to be able to summon the Max here instead of just straight up linking off for it, he'll be able to use the effect of Caspar here to search the Desperado. And, of course, Max resolving his Chain Link 1 here to summon that last, I believe, one of his last copies of Kid Brave in the deck. His deck looking pretty thin at this point. Um, yeah, especially when he's going through the search of the deck. Looking pretty thin. Um, but going into another copy of Nightmare Unicorn here, we saw him, uh, this Nightmare Unicorn get compulsed back to the extra deck a few turns back. But now it is back, discarding that Desperado here to try to get rid of this Dupe Frog. He knows it's a Dupe Frog. Doing everything he can just to get rid of it, because muskets have a hard time dealing with things over 2,000 attack, I would say, um, or even 1,500, because I believe your strongest main deck monster is wild at 1,700, and Dupe Frog has a pretty big defense, so he's going to be able to shuffle that back into the deck, turn everything to defense, normal summon a copy of Starfire, and swing in for 22, 16, 14, and 13, I believe. Uh, if I remember that correctly, and dropping this Paleo player down to a measly 1,500 life points. And uh, Musket player sitting pretty good at uh, 8,000 life points. No Paleos in Grave, one set back row, and I believe he actually ended up top decking another copy of Dupe Frog, which is actually hilarious, so we're just right back to where we were. But it's still not the best situation to be in because that unicorn can run it over if he so desires to. And uh, Paleo player just going to scoop it up here and we're going to quickly head into a game three. Um, which is nice to see. I like game threes. I don't like to see swift two O's all the time. But Paleo getting started off with the Lilith revealing three copies of Trap Trick, of course. And uh, going to set five. So pretty solid opening, if you ask me. The only thing that might make it better is if you had a Swat Frog in his hand. Musket's getting started with the normal summon of that Doc. And we'll see a Crackdown get activated here. Now, I believe there could have been a better sort of order of operations of things that are activated now. You'll see on the side of the Musket player, which I'll let you guys figure out in the comments. I don't know if it would have made too much of a difference in the end. Um, it may have, but... He gets started with the last stand here on that copy of Crackdown. Because if the Crackdown goes through, the Musket player pretty much has to end his turn because that one Musket monster is so, so pivotal. Um, because it's going to allow him to essentially go into max, which he needs to basically survive to be able to get all these effects off. Now we'll see an activation of Lost Wind. Uh, and we'll see a red reboot. So basically, the discussion will end up being, should he have played the reboot first? And then have saved the last stand uh, for later cards. Uh, so both players paying half their life points, shelling out a lot of life here uh, to be able to shut some key cards down. Judgment stopping the reboot, reboot trying to stop the lost wind. And as it stands, the max will be negated. I believe there was a bit of a ruling question of whether or not he would have to pay the 4000 for the reboot since the activation itself was negated. So I believe they did have a judge come over to inspect that. But I believe the way that it was ruled, since uh, there's sort of two different activation requirements for uh, Red Reboot, um, you know, you only pay cost if it's being activated from the hand. Otherwise, you do not. Um, so if it is being activated in the hand, you cannot activate it without simply paying the 4,000 first. Um, even though it was negated by judgment, um, a little bit of dispute whether or not, you know, he would have to actually pay the 4,000. I'm not sure if it's 100% correct, um, but that's just how it was ruled in this given situation. And uh, that's just sort of how things play out. And as he tries to go into the end phase, we'll see a copy of goddamn scapegoat stealing the game here. And Magical Muskets unfortunately falling here in round one, 2-1 to Paleozoic Frog. So 
yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I'm really excited to bring you guys the rest of the feature matches from this tournament, so be looking forward to that. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.